The tutorial for today is going to be spirals. Now this technique was pretty much started by Mystique and later expanded by Schrodinger Cat and then again uh, reposted not too long after that um, with some additions um, by Firel. And um, me, I'm going to add my little two cents to it and we're going to try to get this thing within like 10 minutes. I hope. Uh, my frames per second right now is right around 30 in game and it's looking like my streams at 30 right now so hopefully it looks good to you guys or at least better than what it did before. Um, so basically we're gonna start with this right here. This is a compressed Rubik's Cube and you'll find this on some of the uh, template boards uh, usually in kind of like this location there's one right there um, some of the most most of the newer boards have this compressed little Rubik's Cube and that's kind of where we're going to be starting with this because this is what's going to be used to actually create the little pillars to be able to do the stretching of the voxel um, I kind of marked off the, uh, this one over here because this is the one that I used uh, to accomplish this but I'm pretty sure there's other ones of these that can actually do it but for uh, expedient state, uh, expedient sake um, this is the one I'm going to be using uh, for this tutorial. Um, the first thing we're going to do let's grab that corner voxel and I'm going to come back over here because this is pretty much where we're going to be doing everything let's paste this and I'm going to stack it right on top and then I'm going to color it like so and then I'm going to take my selection tool and as you can tell when I select this thing let me see if I can zoom in on this the voxel space actually has two colors in it for the selected voxel space that is what you're after right here. You'll also notice that this bottom one literally is the length of a full voxel. But what we're after is this exact shape here. This is actually two separate voxels. And so I'm going to take my selection tool and I'm going to grab this thing and I'm going to pull it down. And I'm going to grab that voxel, control copy. And I'm going to bring it over here close to my my other voxel. Let me see if I can zoom out just a little bit so you can see what it is I'm doing here. Control V to paste. And I'm going to bring this up. Now if you notice where this selection is, it's in this particular corner right here. What I want to do is I want to rotate this around to this side and paste it right on this face of this, vo of this uh, voxel stack. So I'm going to do a control V to paste. I hit tab. I'm going to rotate it once, twice, and I'm going to put this one right next to the one I just put down. So I'm going to hit shift, click. And I'm going to use my tweak mode here to get this thing into position. So I'm going to slide this up and I'm going to click. So now I have these two shapes, or this one shape pretty much now, but these are two different stacks that I'm going to be using for to be able to manipulate this particular voxel. Now I'm going to kind of go into a little bit more detail here and uh, Rave was nice enough to build me this huge, huge little voxel thing here so you can actually see what it is that I'm going to be doing with this. Now when you actually look at this if I take my selection tool and I grab this top corner and I bring it down to about halfway let me pull it over like this and pull this up like this you see this right here represents pretty much like our uh, standard voxel thickness you know don't mind the measurements here but this is like a hypothetical um, kind of thinking right now I'm trying to explain it a little bit easier so it'll be easier to understand on how we place 
these little things that I just made to be able to manipulate this voxel to stretch it like this, right? And if I take this one of these little voxels and I put it into the main voxel here, you can see that I'm going to have one that sticks up high, but the rest of it's going to be on the inside of that voxel. I'm going to move it outwards in this direction one and then in that direction one and then I'm going to use my V key to flip it and basically what we'll end up kind of coming up with is pretty much what you see here in as for the shaping here and what that's going to do is take this corner and it's going to pull it up to this double stack section here and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here for with the first piece. So let's go ahead and grab this first one. And let me scroll in here so you can see it. Now, if I grab this one right here, this is the one we're going to use on the side that I'm at right now. And this other one right here is going to be used over on this side here to do the stretching. All right, so let's go ahead and grab this first one and we got to grab both sections when we do this so let's go ahead and copy paste and I'm gonna put this right inside shift click I'm gonna put this right inside of that voxel we have sitting right here let me drop this down alright so I got this one on this side it's gonna be on my side and as you can tell, it's right here. Hopefully you can see that. It's right here on my corner face here. So I'm going to pull this outwards to me one time, move it over one time, and I'm going to click it. As you can tell, it's upside down. So I need to do this again, but I need to flip it using my V key. So let's go ahead and back up, Control Z. Control V and let me go ahead and get this thing in position. Move this up. And I'm gonna hit my V key to mirror it. Click. Now you can see that it only comes up to one half of the voxel height here and extends all the way down a pretty much a full length of a voxel here. That's where we want it. So let's go ahead and hit our checkbox. Now if we look at it, you see it used the black piece here to actually do the stretching. And it pulled it off into that one direction. We're going to rinse and repeat this operation for the other side. So let's go ahead and grab this one. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. And let's go ahead and get it set up exactly where we need it. And we should not have to, to flip this one. This one should actually just go where it needs to be. So let me get this thing in position. Should be right about there. Let's move this up. And you can see if I move this up in the position where it needs to be here, it only comes down one half of the voxel. And that red dot should be on the top over here and you can see that it's literally in this far side. So let me go ahead and check. And I've stretched that voxel so where it's flat on this side and it's flat on the bottom side as well. It's pretty much as flat as you could possibly get. With my red dot here, red dot here, and if I take my selection tool and I grab this voxel like so, you can see the positioning, positioning that I actually have used for that particular voxel it's off into this backside corner and if I grab this one over here you can see it's in this backside corner in comparison to the center voxel but this is the voxel we've actually created and we're going to be using for the rest of the um, for the rest of the time to do these spirals now I've already kind of pre-prepped some of this stuff and here here's one that I made earlier the next thing you're going to do is you're going to actually create a three by three square just like this three one three so you got three by three by one in height and 
you actually set up this little anchor right here on the outside because this is going to be pretty much like your handle where you're actually going to be grabbing a hold of this template that we're going to be creating okay so with that we then chop out this center section and within like a little cross in it like this so we got these four voxels by themselves we're then going to take this voxel I'm going to do a control C and I'm going to do a control V and I'm going to place this voxel in the same locations as those four voxels so I'm going to start with this one let me get this thing up in the position so there's our first one now I'm going to move it out to this other one I'm going to hit tilde tab tab until I'm to green and I'm going to rotate one time back towards myself and then I'm going to move it over to the next one I might have to manually move it to here tilde tab and I'm going to roll it back to me one time click then I'm going to come back over to this front one I'm going to have to manually do it again tilde tab tab and we'll roll back to myself one more time and then I'm going to click and this is the shape that we're after right here and there's a big reason why we want this right here and that's because of the oh, actual rotations like that it does Haji Shistar Haji Shistar welcome to the channel <laughs> sorry if I messed up your name any um, so this is kinda what we're after right here the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this one this was the one that we started with I'm gonna go ahead and copy this one while we're at it control C to copy it and then over here on this one it'll be just like I had doing did a control paste to put it down so the next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our heel tool and make sure you're underground when you do this and I'm right underneath the sand right now and so most likely this is gonna turn to sand instead of dirt but I'm gonna take my heel tool and I'm gonna click each one of these to set them pretty much to dirt. Then I'm going to do a control V to paste and I'm going to stack that copied piece that I had before one on top and one on the bottom. And this is going to set this up to where all I got to do is copy the center section and I'll have my cutter created. So with that let's go ahead and select just that center portion without selecting the other two the the top one or the bottom one so all we need is that center one and I'm going to do a control C to copy and I've already set up these different patterns here and it makes more sense if you actually look at it uh, we have our first one this is the first one that's going to be uh, replaced then this one will be replaced then this one and then this one now using the cutter it basically shapes that particular uh, voxel into the shape that we're looking for and just like it did over here when I pasted that one on top and that one on bottom it forced the one in the center to conform to that shape and that's basically what we're doing with this technique now if I do a control V and I paste right here and you can see I've already kinda got it marked out how this uh, this thing should be laid out on the floor here I'm gonna paste my first one here and I'm just gonna travel upwards and as I travel upwards you can see that it's forcing those uh, particular voxels to shape the same way as the one that I created earlier so now I have a single one single loop of that spiral and that's just by putting in those four voxels and one in this corner 
go up one for the next corner, go up one for the next corner, go up to the next corner, and you go up one voxel. Now that's actually creating a single strand to go all the way around. For this next one, I did the same thing, but I did it with two, and I left a gap between each one of them. So let's, I'll show you what it does with it. Come in, and I'll start at the very bottom, and I'll work my way up the same exact way. And you'll notice a really cool pattern here because it's actually doubled now. Now if I come to this one and I've literally gone four places and they're all back to back all the way through. And I've only I've done the same type of a spiral pattern as I did over here and over here by going up one, pasting, up one, pasting, up one, pasting on each one of the corners of this three by three. So with this type of a pattern you'll see that it does some really cool designs especially for like pillars so let's do that let's go ahead and just make our way up this length and you can see it literally makes a banding where it literally is like continuous spiral that goes all the way up um, the length of this thing and you can make this thing as, as high and as tall as you want to and it really comes out with some really cool effects now say I want to fill this center I want to put like a um, a center shaft into it like this well you have to start out over here and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a solid let me find my my top one here which is there I'm going to hit shift click I'm going to go down one and in one just like this and I'm going to hit check and then I'm going to heal that center piece now doing the same thing I can grab that center pull it all the way around and just copy that center section control C to copy and I'm going to come over here and what that's going to allow me to do is to have the center shaft in here and have it undisturbed and everything else will wrap around it so I'm going to do a control V to paste click and just continue up just like I did before and this one actually creates this pattern that's pretty much just like a spring or uh, piping for like a steel or something like that but these are different ways you can actually um, create these different spiral patterns over here I made a really tall one and this is actually really cool if you really kind of look at it here it literally is a continuous like candy cane pattern and could probably be used for just that making a candy cane <laughs> um, if I alternate them and I go up every other one I can get patterns like this and um, just doing different things with it you can actually create some really cool stuff and this is a double stack um, there was two 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 and two stacked on top of each other so I've got this pattern and that right there is pretty much spirals in a nutshell